with us today to give us a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to read off the names of you guys to sort of vote. How's that sound? Angels we have heard on time. Angels from the realms of glory. Go tell them the mountain. Yeah. Go tell them the mountain.
Dann will er sie knacken. Seht ihr? Pets. So for those who bring us joy. I made a mistake at work, so I, I need credit for that. And also I miss my mother. So for those who have left us and left this world, those that we grieve around the holidays. For the family that we are gathered with, for the family who are far away, for those who are traveling, for the friends who become like our family, for the people that we love who have had changes in health, mind, body, or spirit. I was asked to raise up in prayer two specific Valley families, and I'm not going to have their names, but we will hold these two families that have been brought to our attention in prayer today. Um, we've had several emergencies just in the days leading up to Christmas with people needing housing or other assistance. And so for the people that become vulnerable at the end of the year, right, when everything gets tough, and for the ways that they reach for help, and we are able to provide it sometimes for love to show up in real and tangible ways. And the prayers of celebration. Blessings and gratitude for life. Kevin. Well, I'm grateful for all of my friends and the people who support me. And I'm grateful that I have a job and that I got an apartment. And, yeah. So for life, go being on the right track right now. That's an right. important thing. And for the beauty of this place, right? Whether we're visiting or we call it home, this is a beautiful place to see the world see the environment and see creation and appreciate it. The freedom to worship wherever we go in this country. The freedom to worship. The choice to be here this morning and spend part of your Christmas day actually focusing on why we're here. And of course use music. <laughs> We've had some years with where we did it off a pillow that's a little more exciting. So let's be in prayer. Oh, Holy God, you come to us as love incarnate and embodied. You come to be among us, and you remind us that we are the children of light and of love, and the love that walks in this world walks through us, that we bear your holiness within us, and that what is possible for others comes through the work and the play and the love that we give out into the world. Give us the resources that we need to be your blessing in the world. And hear those prayers that we have lifted up today for family, for friends, for pets, for the well-being of those that we are with, for those who have left us that we miss and mourn, for those who are going through transitions of all kinds, for the beauty of your creation and the chance to be here gathered in your name and to remember that you are the greatest gift of all. Hear now our silence. And hear us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, Lord in heaven, thy will be found in me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us all into temptation, as it were us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Time for more to say. <laughs> okay, so the list keeps going. Uh, we first know of O Come All You Faithful, O Come, O Come Emmanuel, Silent Night.
tradition that our family has had. Do you hear the bell? Um, we've had this tradition for almost two decades now. That even when I wasn't a minister and we lived down the street from the church on Sunday morning, our family would come and we would tell stories and help lead a service. Um, but this story was first told to us by our minister and it has become the tradition to tell this story which is very dear to our family, but it gets to the heart of Christmas and you get to be part of it. So every time you hear the word bell, ring your bell. This is the story of Little Pine, who's a Christmas tree. And some centuries ago, there was a royal tradition that there was a royal forest. And they grew the Christmas trees and then at the end of the year, for the 12 days of Christmas, the tree would be erected and decorated, and all the lords and the ladies and the queen of the land would gather around it and exchange gifts and dance and play music. And it was the most regal tree from the forest each year. And so the trees in the forest knew that this was their destiny. And they strove to be the tallest, the straightest, and the most perfect of trees. And every year the woodsmen would go out and they would select the tree. But they would also start paying attention to the trees that were growing, expecting them to become next year's tree. And then there was one tree called Little Pine. And Little Pine grew on the edge of the forest where Little Pine had plenty of sunlight and space to go. Little Pine was tall and erect with perfect symmetrical branches. And the woodsmen started to tag Little Pine and say, probably by the next year, some of the trees around Little Pine started. They wanted to be the Christmas tree. And there was Little Pine on the edge, and he was already probably next year's choice. And so Little Pine continued to grow. And then the winter of the following year came. And Little Pine was tall and straight, and all the branches were reaching up to the sky. But the winter was a hard one. And towards the beginning of winter, when the snows had set in and food was scarce, a rabbit came bounding through the forest, chased by dogs. The rabbit went from tree to tree, trying to find a tree under which it might hide. But the trees were trying to stay perfect. And their branches were upright, and there was no shelter for the rabbit trying to hide from the pack of dogs. And the rabbit ran a skitter and came close to Little Pine, and Little Pine's heart broke a little bit. And Little Pine lowered its lowest branches down into the snow around its base. And the rabbit took shelter under the branches of Little Pine, and the dogs ran past and couldn't find the rabbit. And in the morning, the rabbit left, leaving behind tufts of hair. 
and its tracks. It was safe for another day. But when little pine tried to pull its branches back up, they were frozen. And so its little branches were no longer those beautiful, symmetrical branches. The winter continued, and you could hear in the distance the bells of the village. And they knew that Christmas was coming closer. And Little Pine wasn't quite as perfect as the woodsman had come out into the forest yet. So Little Pine thought, perhaps I still have a chance to be the queen's tree. But around Little Pine, the others were saying, that tree looked perfect. Look at my bridge. And then a terrible blizzard came. And it was blowing a small mother bird through the winds, and she looked again for shelter and sanctuary, and tree after tree stayed out, with the branches like this, and then they clutched them tight. There was no place for the bird to land, and fine rested, until she was blown past, almost past the little pine. The little pine created a hole, just a small hole in its branches. And she nested there and weathered the worst, the worst of the blizzard and stayed warm and safe. And when the winds faded, she left. But again, when little pine tried to restore the symmetry of its branches, they were irreparably changed and there was a hole deep in little pine's boughs. And now the woodsmen were beginning to make their rounds in the village, and you could hear the bells of their play as they started to walk through the woods. Little Pine had perhaps a day left before they would make their choice. And that night, a little deer, one of the ones that had been so snowbound and starving, came with its thin ribs, and it kept looking for food, and all of it trees, lifted their branches as high as they could away from the hungry little deer. And little pine allowed the branches to come within reach of the little deer. And the little deer ate and survived through one more night. And the very next morning, sure enough, there were the woodsman's sleigh bells. They had made some recommendations, and the queen was coming out in her own sleigh. She had many silvery bells ringing, ringing as she rode through the forest, pulled by one horse. And they navigated among the trees, and she stopped and she considered that as she came around the edge of the forest where little pine was, she was very offended by what she saw. How did this misshapen tree grow in my forest, and how could you allow it to go another year? But then, she began to read the story of the tree. She saw the tuft of hair left by the rabbit. She saw the tracks left by the deer. She saw the feather from the bird. And as she began to see and read the tracks and the stories, all the things that little Pine couldn't tell her, about the bent branches, the hole in the heart of the tree, and nibbled away bare ends of those boughs, began to speak to her in a different way. And instead of the tall, perfect fir tree that surrounded Little Pine, she pointed at Little Pine, and she said, that, that is my Christmas tree. The woodsmen were astonished. The horses shook their heads and their bells rang. All the other trees were astonished. But Little Pine was the one that they took home with them and that they erected in the Queen's Hall. And the people exchanged their gifts around that tree and they played their music and they danced around that tree. And no tree has ever been perfect since that first imperfect tree. 
because in the end the heart of the tree was not its perfection, but its imperfection. The ways that, like us, we bend and hollow ourselves out and make ourselves available and pour love out into the world so that we too are wounded sometimes, hollowed out sometimes, less than perfect. But we are beautiful. And the beauty of the gift of the tree and the beauty of the gift of our lives is not our perfection, but that in each of us lives the love and the light of God and the possibility of making a difference for others. So in that hall, as people danced around that tree, the bell rang and rang and rang. Can you make more noise now? <laughs> All right, let's try on the mic. If it is, we tell them, oh, not every year, but a lot of years, it's our daughter's favorite Christmas story. Did you make it up originally? No. No. But what more needs to be said about Christmas Day? The love of Christ walks in the world, and we are gathered here because that love has come into the world to be among us. And we are called to remember that we are beloved and beautiful just the way we are. And we are all children of God and children of light. Now we can sing some more. Okay, so we went back down the list because now we're kind of circling through it. We've got angels we have heard on high. Alright, 135, angels we have heard on high. Anything else or is that good?